Hello and welcome to Edukimi's YouTube channel. My name is Harsh Singh and in this video we shall discuss the Gazette magazine for 11th September 2021, your daily guide to UPSC current affairs. Now, the hot selling articles in the market today are one, uh, this is on the New Delhi resolution of the BRICS talking about the Afghan situation and settling it with peace. First snapshot. The second one relates to Chandrayaan 2 findings. And the third one is on the indigenous capacity building for an AVAX aircraft. So we will understand this in the third snapshot. This day in history belongs to 9 by 11 terrorist attacks. Featured news. Featured news on a separate video and rest of the discussion on this video that you're watching. So ensure that you watch both of them. Now this featured news is on methanol economy. This is in context of a news of an Indian PSU building a setup for methanol economy in the country. Now methanol is a very important alternative fuel which will be replacing the conventional fuel that we import as much as 90% from abroad. And in this context we will understand what are the important benefits of methanol economy. Just like we studied ethanol economy in one of the feature articles this is on methanol economy and these kind of articles can definitely come straight question in UPSC exam we'll understand what are the advantages and we will also understand what are the shortcomings that India will face regarding this technology the terms and concept for today are Kazin 21 medium range surface to air missile 2 plus 2 dialogue India and Australia and then fourth transport and marketing assistance now why this scheme has been rejuvenated we'll understand here Editorials of today. Today we have three editorials. The first one talks about the new role of states, the state actors versus non-state actors terror, terror threats. So what is the new role that states are playing? The second one talks on the new security dynamics in America. How has it changed with time? And the third one is on the appointment in the uh, appellate tribunal. We are talking of income tax appellate tribunal and what are the issues with it? The case study of the day is from Rajasthan, the Dhun project. So let's start the discussion. We have dedicated this day in history to the 9-11 terror attacks that happened in America in the year 2001. Four aeroplanes, American aeroplanes were hijacked and two of them, they collided with the World Trade Center. One of them collided at the Pentagon and the fourth plane crashed at a field in Pennsylvania. And since then, America has been waging war against terror throughout the world. This has changed the whole course of history of humanity, modern humanity. The first snapshot is on the New Delhi Declaration by BRICS. This is on settling Afghanistan situation by peaceful means. Before getting into this, let's talk about BRICS. Now, anytime BRICS comes into question anywhere, all you got to mention is importance, the importance of BRICS. It, has, it represents 40% of the global population, countries like China and India. Remember that. Now, it represents around one-fourth of global GDP and one-fourth of global area as well. So size why you see country like China, Russia, one of the biggest countries. And then since they are growing economies, around 16% of the trade. So these are the kind of facts you must throw whenever there is a question on BRICS in, in discussions or in written answers. Right. So you can use this. Now, therefore, they are a major influencer. And now they have spoken of a strategic stability. Strategic stability in Afghanistan. So they are talking of peace, peaceful resolution of the Afghanistan crisis. Right now we are seeing an, uh, almost a civil strife, a civil war in Afghanistan where the Taliban, which is trying to form a government and then we have rebel forces and then uh, there is international pressure to have this kind of strategic stability. You can very well see why Russia demands stability in the region. You can very well see why China demands stability in the, very, in the same region. China, Uyghur Muslims. Russia, the uh, protesters by Chechenya Muslims and then India we have Kashmir issue right so you can very well see why these nations are hell-bent on this peaceful means of resolution in Afghanistan they also look at trade with Afghanistan and the nearby areas right so first of all intra-Afghan dialogue this is what they favor at and then a peaceful resolution so nobody wants to interject in the internal policies right now but they want a peaceful resolution so this is the new Delhi de declaration this global body, BRICS, is an important one. Why? Because uh, these emerging economies are not only talk about, talking about counter-terrorism, they are also talking about vaccine development, green tourism, counter-terrorism, uh, then de developing a network of telescopes. So there are various initiatives that these countries have taken together. Snapshot 2 is on Chandrayaan 2 findings, new findings by Chandrayaan 2. Now, Chandrayaan 2 had three important components. One was the orbiter, then we had the lander, and then rover. Now, orbiter was the one which was to orbit around 
the moon right and then we had a lander a lander a capsule which would have landed on moon surface and a rover would have come out so vikram lander and pragyan rover since vikram lander did not land properly it crash landed therefore the lander and rover mission they were unsuccessful so india will attempt chandrayaan 3 in which it will have the lander and rover again and right now the orbiter is orbiting around moon and through its images it is able to find out what are the new findings this is going to help new innovations and findings for moon landing so isro japan aerospace exploration agency jaxa they are going to enable one of the mechanisms in which we land at polar exploration places so south pole is where japan and india are planning to land in the year 2024 right also nasa's artemis mission they are also planning to have a mission a human mission to moon and this is going to help them what are the important findings the first important finding is the signature for water we have understood that there is a possibility that water exists in the moon this is one that means life can persist there we have also found methane ammonia those kind of gases which are important for organic organic living on moon so this is one we have also found various minerals chromium manganese silver right sodium now these are the important ingredients which are required for progeny of life and therefore moon planet becomes very important for our research and development The third snapshot is on AVAX. What is AVAX? Airborne Early Warning and Control Systems. Now this is a type of aircraft you can see in this image. There is an aircraft and then we have a radar placed over this aircraft. How does it help us? Now this aircraft helps us in many many ways. The first way is that since it flies at a lot of altitude, it can oversee the war operations which are happening. So if this is earth and war operations are happening at this juncture, this aircraft might be flying at this height. and through radar technology it will not only be able to gauge the whole war scenario the whole war theater it will also be able to recommend the automated systems and the manual systems as to where the enemy is from where are the enemy threats coming in so this is a guide it is a basic planning and guide tool for the whole war theater this is one now the higher it flows the higher this avax system flows the better it is for india why because india also has got a lot of uh, orbital satellites so satellites are low earth orbit middle earth and higher earth orbit and if this system is in place this will also protect our satellites from the incoming celestial bodies right so this will also be able to let these bodies know let these satellites know if there is an incoming threat for these satellites not humanly threat necessarily but threat celestial threat any incoming particle celestial particle so this is how it can be helpful for india now india right now has been importing these uh, big planes also india has also been importing this radar technology what india can do right now is build this technology with the help of drdo and have these planes uh, created by air india so this is what is the news now if we compare india's position with respect to its neighbors china china has got 30 of these aircrafts pakistan has got 8 to 10 and india only has 5 and that too most of it imported technology so this indigenous attempt by drdo by the cabinet committee on security which has now approved this project right air india and drdo this is going to be a step in the right direction what will it give us it will give us space situational awareness it will give protection to all indian entities in the space right so we will be able to detect the space debris as well now this image very rightly talks about what all are the benefits so we can track the threats yes we can communicate with the fighter jets yes we can plan and uh, execute a complete war a strategy yes we can carry out search and rescue operations absolutely correct and what about detection of intrusions so this has got a multi faceted aspect to this technology image of the day is on elf emergency landing facility in the image right here you can see a sikhoi aircraft landing twin engine twin seater aircraft it is landing on the highway this highway is located just near barmer now barmer is on the verge of the pakistan border and therefore india needs to protect its entities how does it do it by aircraft flying across the runways which can be used as highways as well right so this is this is a very good alternative to build uh, the runways on the highways itself because building a runway separately or an air base separately takes a lot of money so india is now planning to build 19 of these kind of uh, uh, emergency landing facilities around the country the first common concept for today is kazim 21 now there are many examples in which the name itself gives a very very good hint of what it is about we are talking about kazakhstan and india exercises 
so this is joint training exercise between india and kazakhstan and it is called as kazind now this exercise this time was about neutralizing the terrorist in semi rural hideouts now if you look at the map carefully here you can see the location of kazakhstan kazakhstan is country and india is here and then we have china which is adjoining both the countries right and therefore if kazakhstan and india have a greater association in military partnership is it not good for india yes it is good now the way china is occupying india's neighborhood sri lanka pakistan bangladesh india has also got its associations and this is one of it the second term in use is mr sam medium range surface to air missile sam stands for surface to air missile and sas stands for surface to surface missile now this medium range sam is going to be used to defend indian establishments important critical establishment of strategic importance to the country for example prime minister's home parliament building right places which are are of very very vital importance for example nuclear facilities so there will be a shield built around this Uh, region this place so area defense or a point defense so this is how mr sam will be used in case there is there is any incoming threat in terms of helicopter aircraft missile rocket now this is where the medium range surface to air missile will defend and it can fire multiple multiple weapons at the same time right so uh, this is how it will engage with the enemy the third term in news is the 2 plus 2 dialogue the name itself suggests Two plus two. That means two ministers from our end and two ministers from their end will do the conversation. And this is uh, the two ministers are foreign ministers and defence minister. In news is that Australia and India have India have held the first two plus two dialogue. Earlier, India has held this dialogue with USA, Japan. Now you can very well see Australia coming together in this two plus two dialogue. Defence and foreign foreign affairs. Right. So this is the quad we are talking of, trying to protect the Indo-Pacific region against China. the fourth term in news is transport and marketing assistance now there is a context to this news during covid times we have had lockdown and post lockdown we have had only few ships moving from one territory to another for trading purposes 90% of the trading happens through marine areas only and therefore the cost of logistics movement has has increased substantially so the government has started to give some assistance again right this time the assistance is for the agricultural producers and now the uh, dairy products also will be given some assistance now this is why the government has initiated transport and marketing assistance uh, scheme now this scheme is not a new scheme it has been reinitiated and some of the other components have been added for example this time the dairy products the first editorial talks about the 20th anniversary of the 9 by 11 attacks the editorial starts by saying that it seemed 20 years back that means in the year 2001 after the attacks in america that this will be a, an epochal year it will be a revealing year after this things will change substantially but if we look at this time right now probably not a lot of things have changed right what has changed however is the way the nation states have prepared themselves against the non state actors against the terrorists and this mechanism has grown grown very much robust the nuclear weapons online digital technology and increased surveillance mechanisms have been introduced around the world against the terror threats right now this is where the extraordinary pass gained by the state have also abused the state power so in individual security privacy they have been curtailed in the name of security right now uh, the editorial then goes on to say that the choice of the attacks the choice of the places where attacks would happen they were also chosen very carefully it was not accidental so the world trade center was the very heart of american capitalism and pentagon very heart of defense of american security and therefore it was very carefully chosen to to drive a point clear to the america right and then was america humbled by these attacks no the editorial says that no america was not humbled in fact it retaliated with a greater force against what bush called as george bush 2 called as global axis of evil against iraq and north korea and then we also know against afghanistan and then uh, the other countries as well so iran is on another country on the list right but america did grow humble it grew humble after facing the 2008 uh, financial crisis and now with the rise of china america is again feeling a little humble right now it is also concluding with talks of chaira it says that china has been persecuting muslims in own its own territory but it is also sinicizing islam by promoting uh, taliban in afghanistan and there is no opposition to such kind of activity the second editorial is about a wider dimension of the meaning of security 
the editorial talks about USA and how USA is dealing with the four Cs, the four crises that it is facing. The first crisis is China, the second crisis is COVID, the third is climate change, and the fourth one is counterterrorism. It has to deal with all these three Cs, the four Cs, and, uh, and the sole decision of whether a decision is correct or not will now be based on will it make the life of Americans easier? Will it make it more safer? Will it make it better than what was before? And this is how the internal policies of the country and external policies both will be designed. Now, external policies about of America were about hegemony, was, were about gaining superiority. Internal policies were for development and there could be mismatch because financial constraints were also there. Strategic significance was also there. But now America is going to handle both the policies, internal, external, only with this kind of question. Will it make life better, easier, or safer for its own people? Right? And there will be no prime distinction between what is the policy inside and what is the policy outside the country. And should India, then it really gets on to an interesting point, should India also follow the suit? Yes, it says yes, India must also follow the similar suit. What is good for its people? India must not have two different policies for inside and outside the nation. Even the army chief, Indian army chief, General Navnavare, he has said that national security is not just about warfare, not about the warfare that is fought at the borders. It is also about financial, health security, food security, energy, environment security inside the country along with informational security. So there must be a wider definition to what constitutes security around the world. The third editorial talks about the arbitrariness in which the president of income tax appellate tribunal was appointed. The editorial begins by talking about the main issue in focus. The issue was this, that out of the nine vice presidents of the income tax appellate tribunal, the seventh in hierarchy, seventh in seniority was appointed as the president. Why are we not appointing the ones on the top? Why are we breaking this hierarchy? It says that income tax appellate tribunal is the mother of all tribunals. And it was established in the year 1941 and other tribunals follow its suit. They follow what is followed here. And therefore this is a very wrong precedent to set, right? Now the president of the income tax appellate tribunal is a sitting or high court judge. And there are certain parameters on which they are uh, put in position, right? So if this seventh, the seventh in hierarchy has been put in position there must be a strong reason to put them here, right? So it could be meritorious or distinguished service ground, but this ground was already taken away from, uh, from appointment in the year 2013 by making an amendment. So why are we still having this? Uh, this uh, breaking this hierarchy. It could be one, either it is temporary or it is the actual appointment as the president. If it is the actual appointment, then reasons must be guaranteed. Reason must be disclosed so that everybody is aware, right? What happens to these judges, six judges who are senior to the seventh judge? Their morale, their incentive for hard work. What about their honesty and uh, intellectual integrity? So these all come in question. There is increase, there is a decrease in morale of the people who are placed higher in hierarchy, who have worked well and yet there is no explanation being given of why they were not chosen as the president, right? So this lacking of transparency procedure is something that was a result of how appointments were made. Probably they were made in an opaque manner. There is a there is a way also it has been given. What is the way of this appointment and promotion? This has to be overseen. It has to be monitored by committee in which there is a senior sitting judge of the Supreme Court monitoring this case of appointment or uh, positions. So probably this was at all not done. This will come out where if there is an inquiry instituted and then we will come to know whether it was on the merit ground or it was nepotism. Also, the, uh, the editorial points about an important issue. The headquarter of the president of income tax appellate tribunal, this is not in Delhi, it is in Mumbai. Yet some of the presidents have started to sit in the Delhi. Uh, why? Why Delhi? Probably because there is also greater political affiliation in Delhi. The case study for today is from Rajasthan, specifically Jaipur. This is the Dhun project from the district Jaipur and we are talking of Fagi Tehsil. What happened in 1981 was that this place went through a disastrous state of flood. This flood caused the whole place to turn barren. Why? Because the topsoil got lost and because of this, the fertility decreased of the place. So since fertility reduced, there were no trees and forest cover, water percolation was less. So there were hardly any water bodies, even if they were, they were uh, with low water table. So these were the issues. And because of this, there was hardly any biodiversity in the whole area. 
hundreds of acres of land and this is when the dhun project was initiated dhun project was about manvendra singh sekhawat he surveyed the whole area and after that he started with water see jal hi jeevan hai water is the source of life he started to conserve water because this area has got decent amount of rainfall happening this is not the area of the typical uh, marusthal typical uh, desert area so since there is some rainfall happening in this area and that is the reason that he started to conserve water by building pits by building bunds by building catchment structures and you can very well see what a catchment structure looks like see you are building bunds here and these can also be done in an in a slopey area so bun at particular altitude so contour on two trenches and these trenches will store water they will not only store water they will also ensure that the water percolates below the surface of earth and it starts to rejuvenate the low ground water table so this happened this happened this did happen in rajasthan it did happen in pagi tahsil and all all the area around 5 to 600 acres of land it got restored it is very simple and this water gave biodiversity to the region so there are various animals water plants Uh, birds and in fact human activity have increased in the area so agriculture being done and allied activities this has also increased the livelihood sources for the people so it's a beautiful initiative and as civil servants as future civil servants this is what uh, you will be expected to do to have innovations and to help the civil society increase such beautiful projects like dhun project if you like our effort if you like our work do share some love on us through shares likes and comments If you subscribe to the channel you will receive timely updates as well thanks for watching